We've now been on Mars for almost two months and we've been witnessing the amazing new vistas of the never before seen Gale landscape taken with our wonderful cameras. However, much of the science team have had their eyes and the rover's eyes firmly focused on the ground. On the drive from the Bradbury landing site to our current location, we have been analyzing three really interesting outcrops that we have called Goulborn, Link and Hotter. If we look at the Hotter outcrop, we can see a distinct layer that has been tilted and eroded, and this allows us to look at the cross section through the layer. When we looked at the layer with our high resolution mass cam camera, we found that it was comprised of sand grains and small pebbles that had become cemented to form a hard layer. Here, you can see a pebble that is three centimeters in diameter, so smaller than a ping pong ball. This suggests that this layer is an ancient gravel deposit. The surprising thing is that when we looked at the pebbles closely, we discovered that many of them were quite well rounded. This is very different to the many angular class that usually litter the Martian surface. On Earth, rounded pebbles are a common telltale sign of rocks that have been transported by water, for example, in a river or a stream. As water flows over a riverbed, if the flow strength is great enough, the pebbles are lifted up into the flow or rolled along the riverbed, and they become pounded and battered against each other, and this causes them to become rounded through time. So what we think we might be seeing here on Mars is an ancient riverbed with the pebble beds representing old stream deposits. The size of the pebbles tells us that these rocks could not have been transported by the wind, so it seems clear they must have been transported by water. So how did this pebble deposit get to be here? If we look more broadly in Gale Crater, we can see that there is a prominent feature that geologists call an alluvial fan. We're going to take a look at fans in Death Valley and explore how they form and then travel back to Gale Crater and explore the relationship between the fan and the landing site as well. So we'll begin with a flight into Death Valley. We've outlined it in white the boundaries of six alluvial fans that we fly into and see outlined, four facing us and two at our feet. The ones facing us are steeper and come out of a steep canyon. Note the fan shape, the lateral boundary spread like a fan that we use to cool ourselves. Now we fly into the headwaters of one canyon and see how a channel spills out of that canyon and the sediment and water that comes rushing out travels to the left and travels to the right, depositing as it does so, shifting, 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 sediment depositing, the river moving over, depositing, the river moving over. Now we're crossing to the other fan that was at our feet, and now we're going to settle down and look back at the two fans, the one, the steep one toward us, the gentle one at our feet. This is Gale Crater, and we're flying in toward the Curiosity landing site. On the image, you'll see a red lines delineating the boundary of an alluvial fan, and the blue delineates uh, fossil channels. In the foreground now, you see a canyon that's some 18 kilometers long, 30 meters deep, 600 meters wide. That sediment was eroded and deposited into a fan-shaped deposit by a series of channels. Here we count about 24 separate fossil channels that played a role in building the fan that we're flying over. In the horizon, you see the X that marks the position of the Curiosity rover. This fan was built by erosion then of sediment in the canyon wall that was brought out and spread across the crater floor. On the fan itself, we can see evidence for multiple channels suggesting that the stream bed direction changed through time. When we look at the location of the Curiosity landing site with respect to the alluvial fan, we see that the rover landed downstream of the fan. The rounded pebbles likely represent long-distance transport down the alluvial fan. So this is really exciting news for the science team because it's the first time we are seeing gravel transported by water on the surface of Mars. <laughs>